find out what happens when demons attack and Laura's life becomes a paranormal nightmare. Stay tuned. That was a lot of responsibility. And we're getting, like, I wake up with bite marks and bruises and I get choked here all the time. And I'm just... So now the spirits, because they... Do you think that happened because they realized you're starting to become more aware? So they went on the attack because now they're literally physically attacking you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. What do you think was the thought or why that it escalated to that point? Does that make sense? Um, I think a couple things. One, okay. believe that the light side let this happen to me. All right. Because they needed to wake me up. I wasn't living the life that I may have contracted into live, or maybe I'm a sleeper cell where I get activated at a certain point in time. Right. Right. And the light side and the dark side, they can all read our minds, our thoughts, our, our feelings, all this stuff. They all have that capability. The dark side tried to squash me like a bug over and over and over. Okay. Um, I remember just being complete and being exhausted was like my baseline being completely exhausted was just another bad day right i remember sitting on my sofa and it, and it's it's lonely because i can't share with my family this type of pain and suffering because i don't want them to worry about me i don't right. want them to worry about these things that are affecting me and us because i don't know what to do about it yet Right? right. I literally had to stop teaching to figure this out. And I'm sitting on the sofa and I'm staring at the fireplace and I just see all these demons coming through the chimney. It's like, holy cow. I don't even know what to do with them. And did your husband believe you? Yes. Thank okay. goodness. Thank right. goodness. Yeah, no he kidding. didn't like it. Believe me. I didn't like it either. But yeah, he did believe me. He understood it. There were too many things that were happening that he would be clued in on or would pique, you know, his interest, so to speak. So right. he, he was, was fully on board. He understood it. So he was a reluctant believer. Yeah. You know, he, um, I have nothing but good things to say. He's my ex-husband right. now. I have nothing but good things to say. He was always supportive in this. I mean... To go from two incomes to one income, even though mine was a partial income at that time, because I was teaching part-time, it's still hard because there's a lot of pressure as him being the breadwinner, especially in Southern California. Life ain't cheap down there. Um, but he understood it and I worked really hard to keep him clean and clear. And I had to learn, I had to learn stuff I didn't know that existed. Right. And sitting on the sofa and I watch all these demons just come funneling through this, it became a portal on the side of the house. And there were many species and varieties. It's like, whoa, it's not just the little horn dudes. Um, <laughs> and I had to figure out how to battle them. I literally had burn marks on my body. I had bruises all over myself. Um, and I'm sitting on the sofa and a couple hours go by and my husband is now home and he's sitting on the sofa or he's in, the, he's comes in and I feel these two pinpoints right here. These mm -hmm. needles, if they felt like fat needles going through my skin, my, my rib cage, my lungs. And then within 15 minutes, he had to take me to the ER for double pneumonia. Wow. I didn't have a cold. I didn't have bronch bronchitis issue. I had nothing. And the doctors are quizzing me, well, how long have you been sick? And, da, 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 da. and it's like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know. And I couldn't breathe. One lung was 80% filled and the other one was 50% filled. It's not normal. And so when we have these unexplained illnesses and things, maybe there is an explanation. Maybe this unseen energetic world can do more things than we believe. And it's not to scare people, but it's like, you know, once you know, you know, knowledge is power. So I literally have to deal with this. I think it's around Thanksgiving time. I couldn't even sit up. I missed Thanksgiving dinner, the friends, the family that were over. 
I couldn't sit up. I mean, it just, it was never ending. And it just, I'm, I don't look like it, but I'm a freaking pit bull sometimes. And I'm not going to let them freaking win. Right. And it I know me- you. So I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> but the audience is all just like, oh, Laura. You know, not my little Laura. <laughs> No, man, yeah, and I, yeah. I pit bull would be a good word. And I will quiz them. I want to know what they know. I want to know how they operate. I want to know what their agenda is. And this is what those moments back then taught me. But it was it was terrifying on a good day. Can I ask you something? Because I found I, similar things with me and different things when I'm dealing with something that is dark or whatnot. Have you found that in that standing up and becoming assertive, putting it out and being actually very verbal. Who are you? What are you trying? It's kind of like it throws the, I've got goosebumps. It kind of like throws them off because they think they're doing everything subtle to a point because they're trying to play with your head. Right. Okay. So that, you know, that, so that's not you and I, again, we're joined on the same thought process. Things yep. will do this. Do not be afraid no, I mean, to turn around when you feel something looming over you to turn around. <sighs> Got to make sure you're, you're cleansing, doing whatever cord cutting, things like that. But to point your finger directly at what you're saying and say, you have no authority here leave me alone. And yeah, people will look at you crazy, (laughs) but you know what? It works. I'm going to say it works 90% of the time. Right. It's not, it's not okay. Just tell the the devil to go away. You know, that. I I wish it was that easy. Don't ask, be authoritative, stand in your power. And so this is where, when people think about the spiritual realms, Oh, I need to ask my angels if they'll help me. Angels, would you please help me? No, I need your help now. Right. And I want to be specific with it. Don't ask, you know, and I always use the word now because there is no time in those dimensions. So, hey, I, hey angels, I need your help. They're going to be like, okay, what's up? Right? Yeah. So be specific. Be, and it's not demanding, but it's being forceful with your energy not to push something over but just to be i'm standing in my power and you know what people we need i i talked about this on my live show last night clarity in everything we do what you want to accomplish what you want to do what's your goals the angels want to help you they are there okay they have to wait for your permission and number two they need to know what you want to do so if yeah. you don't know they're not going to come in you know they're going to be okay i gotta wait till you know the wind stops blowing and she stops smelling the daisies you know waiting for the unicorn to fly out all right and then everything's just going to miraculously happen clarity is extremely important in anything that we're talking about and what we're doing and this is true for manifestation. People are all talking about manifestation all the time. Be specific, be consistent. I used to, it, it killed me. All y'all know, church boy, Baptist preacher's kid, grew up in the church, okay? And when we, whenever they were praying, you know, the prayer was good. Giving thanks up front, gratitude, you know, following, kind of following the steps of the Lord's prayer, you know? Our Father who art in hallowed be the name. The prayer just goes up first. But then at the end of every prayer, Joe's got cancer. All right? We want that cancer cured. But in the end, your will. If it be your will. It's like you left a caveat because you don't have the faith to believe that God, I see more and I'm getting off on a tangent, so I got to be careful. I see more <laughs> conservative people that don't understand they've taken the power away from God, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it, okay? Rather than standing what you said in your power and saying, this is what I want. 
Yeah. It's a big difference. It makes a big deal. It, I, I learned something else in this process. Fear. Fear in small doses keeps us safe, right? Fear in large doses paralyzes us. It creates an inaction. And so every morning for years, I would have to stand up to the face of fear and say no and march on. You know, from the, um, I don't remember if I shared the story about an attempted possession with one of my mm -hmm. kids. It's in the book. Um, she comes out, she says, hey, mom, this Batman wanted inside my body. He wanted my body. And I'm, I'm like making sandwiches for school, okay? Yeah. And he's like, I want, he says he wants him. And she's like six. And he says, he tried to get into my body feet first, right in the solar plexus area. And I said, no way. And I went, pow, pow. And she used her hands and says, no way. And mom, he ran off. That was an attempted possession. She had the wisdom, the strength, the courage, the bravery, the fortitude to say, oh, heck no, at six years old. Right. If I had been there, would I have thwarted that process? Would I have created some type of lack of confidence within her, right? I right. don't know. Because when she's telling me the story and my knees are like shaking and I'm like, oh, that's nice, dear. Go get dressed and get ready for school. Yeah, you did the <laughs> right thing. Yeah. Let's not talk about this at school. <laughs> Yeah. Extra brownie for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the daily horrors. And I could never predict what the next day would bring. It was so crazy. And you start to question your mental health. And now you're dealing with exhaustion. And so when you're chronically exhaustion, your mental health starts to fray along the way, right? And that's, what, you know what? And you're talking about something, and I got this in my head. I want to get it out before, and then we can keep moving on. But hold that thought, your exhaustion, okay? Folks, if you listen, everything she's talking about are also signs of depression. Mm -hmm. Exhaustion. You don't want to move. You get lethargy, okay? Not being able to breathe. Different things. And I want to ask you, Okay, I know let, I'm not gonna ask you. I'm you know, in my mind, especially having in Florida when I was a police officer there for quite some time, Baker acted many people, and pardon the French, but a lot of people used to call me in either my partners or the ambulance crew or whatnot would be like, oh, the shit magnet's working. Because if it was crazy, if it was coming out, it was gonna be on my shift. <laughs> all right. Just it, it, it was something about that. All right. But it was, I think, in certain times, people crying for help. And there were people that I have literally Baker acted that were on the verge of killing themselves. And again, we're talking 40 years ago. Yeah. You know, 30 plus years ago. You didn't walk into a mental health institution and tell them this person's possessed. Right. Okay. You didn't walk in and tell them they've got an attachment. The voices they're hearing are real because it was all the pipe smoking. I'm going to be the next Albert Einstein people. And I want you to realize that folks, sometimes these symptoms are alarm bells for you that you've got something deeper going on and it needs to be addressed. One of my, the, one of the elements that I had going for me was that there was no substance addictions because a substance, a, a, any form of an addiction creates a crack in the foundation. Yep. And a lot of times, especially what you're dealing with back then, these people are utilizing a, a mind-altering substance to try to escape what they're seeing and sensing that nobody else can see or sense. They think they're right. going to get it's going to be easier, but it makes it worse. Um, I had a a neighbor who showed up in my closet one day. It's all, everything always happened in my bedroom. I think I mentioned that last week. Yeah, <laughs> like this is a whole different show. <laughs> <laughs> so and if i have shared the story on air please let me know but my neighbor showed up in my in my closet 
and I didn't know he had died. Okay. And he ended up committing suicide. Um, and he came into my house because he said it was a warm, safe space. He had been in life trying to remove these dark flying things that were always after him, terrifying him over and over and over. He started drinking to see if they would go away. He became an alcoholic too. Right. He ended up shooting himself on accident. So he's trying to shoot these things flying around. And instead he said, as a ghost, one of these things that was flying around, put the gun to my head and shot me. Okay. So I, you know, it took me a while to figure out what was in my closet. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. When your clothes Next are moving around, there's on no window. Laura's bedroom and her closet. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I was able to cross him over, but that is a really sad story because they got the better of him. And suicide victims are often harassed in this manner. Um, and we need to have the compassion for them and not just give them the, oh, they deserve to go to hell because they, you know, desecrated their body, blah, blah, blah. Well, we could say that about anything, really. So he, any suicide victim needs to be crossed over because they don't know what to do. Their frequency is so low, there is no light for them to go to. It looks like a deep fog bank. And he's he was a really huge lesson for me. Um, it told me at the time that as dark as everything was in my home, that I had some light within the home that he saw from a distance and he came in there and felt the refuge, the safety, even though I'm in battling demons, et cetera, in my home all the time. Right. So I thought that was, um, I learned a lot, but I learned a lot from every one of those experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And folks, again, if you, uh, I'm going to screw this up again. All right. If you order the book, I'm just going to look at this picture of this beautiful book. Okay. You order the book. If you do the pre-order, Laura's going to sign it and mail it directly to you. So, Hey, I got through that. You know, is, yeah. is there something going on today? Maybe, you know, but at any rate, yeah. um, so make sure you, because a lot of these stories, she goes into a lot more detail and more stories than what we're telling here. Um, you know, one of the things I do want people to realize is not everyone that hears voices or they say they're hearing voices is crazy. Now, I will have a lot of people that I went to school with, okay, and in social work that will be like, oh, here he goes, okay? Because <laughs> so, one of the weird things, I, I, y'all might have heard me shuffle, okay? And some just told me to draw a couple of cards. One of the weird things I got while you were talking about not knowing what direction was the moon card, okay? People are lost. They don't know what to do. And there's a domestic side and there's a wild side always trying to get out. And it's a horrid feeling not knowing which way to go, where to head or whatnot, or how to get to where you're trying to go. But in that, this card, the Six of Swords, which talks about moving over, I'm going to bring this a little closer to the camera. Look at the word this deck assigned to it. Science. All right. Why is science in a tarot deck? One of the things we have to realize is sometimes science is a wonderful thing. All the time, science is a wonderful thing. But science wants to lock on to only something it can prove or explain. And now, that's the reason for the longest time, Oh, UFOs, we're idiots, and all this stuff. Now, we're finally acknowledging because of new technology, science, all right, that things are actually occurring, and the United States Navy and everybody finally admitted these things, the Tic Tacs, the whatever, we don't know what they are, okay? So they won't say they're alien, but they will say we don't have any clue what it is. And this is where I want us to go in the spirit world and understand. A lot of times, you know, give spirit a chance, okay, to help somebody and clear and clear, okay? 
I feel like I'm babbling. I'm losing on something or whatnot. But no, but you're bringing up a really good point that um, there's no such thing as no such thing. Right. And it's not my quote. I, f I forget the person that made that quote, but there's no such thing as no such thing. And we have to understand how the unseen energetic world does impact us. You know, you go into a meeting and your boss is in a in, in a mood and you walk into this meeting and the tension is so thick, you can cut it with a knife. What is that? Right. That's the energy. It exists. There really is no solid definition for energy, by the way. If you look up the definition of energy, it's kind of a open-ended definition, really. Right. And there's our lifestyles are moving faster. They it's like everything is at the speed of light. Time is not linear. We used to think of time as a straight line going across, right? Well, how many times have you been like, whoa, where did that hour go? Or whoa, you know, this these 15 minutes are dragging on forever. Right. Okay, this is time, but it's a human mind construct. So on the earth plane, we have that concept of time. We need time, space, and gravity to have these, <coughs> excuse me, physical earth experiences. Outside of time, space, and gravity, there is no time. There is no time. And is this how, you know, UFO ships can traverse the universe in a nanosecond? Because there is no time. I mean, there's so many things that we can think about. We can, you know, learn about to explore and, but come back to the basics. We always have to come back to being grounded, standing true to who we are, standing true to what we believe. And that's the bottom line. And, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. We know I ain't, you know, that's, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, but, uh, you know. But our teacups can mingle, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's what, but folks, th this is something, this, this goes so deep and it goes so different. And this is the reason Laura and I decided to make this channel crossing realms together, because there's so many topics that we need to discuss to help people understand and to cope with and to deal with and to give people a place to answer questions because this goes much broader than what we can do. You know, if we started talking about this, this show would be four or five hours nonstop and nobody's watching it except you few crazies like us. Okay. <laughs> and we can't do this twice a week. All right. Or once a week or whatever, but it is important that you have a place to go and ask questions because this does it's got fingers, it diverges, it goes into all different kinds of areas from religion to science, to paranormal, to all of it. And you would be surprised how much of it actually intertwine in and out of each other. So I want you to be open. You know, one of the things we I, I've talked about, and I think this is important, Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? It's going to be very important in the upcoming months, years, as things start to change, okay? For people to be open to a new perspective. Everything that you're seeing now, and some of it may be true, but you're going to have to go, wait a minute. There's a deeper reason, a darker reason, or a lighter reason. And we need people when you're opening this, you've got to keep an open mind and be accepting of just at least checking out a new perspective. When we can check out new perspectives and discern what was true for us or not, it means we have free will that nobody has hijacked our free will. Exactly. And I'm fixing to do a show about god and consciousness and things like that and you know one of those things it talks about is discernment you can keep your faith you can be grounded in your faith but be open to new ideas and accept what works and reject what doesn't just like we end the show with every day all right discernment is huge people fear 
if they find something, it will shake their faith. You know what? Being open, a lot of times, you might find the missing piece that actually grounds you deeper in your faith because now you understand why you believe something rather than, well, minister so-and-so told me this and I was told to never question a preacher. Yeah. Question. Even if you're hiring a psychic, a shaman or whatever, blah, 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 ask questions because your soul health is worth it. And you know what? I will tell everybody, one of the things driving me nuts right now, and this is the closest I'm going to be to any political thing in the world. It drives me nuts to hear somebody go, don't fact check me. Well, then shut up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I want to be fact checked. And I will say this was one thing I got from my Baptist minister father. When he read the Bible, he would give scripture, give what it's for, talk about the forward and after that verses, and then tell people it is your job to go in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and check everything I told you on Sunday and come back with questions. You can't trust everything somebody says because we're going to, you know, we're going to embellish. We're going to make it, you know, telling stories, things like that. It's just fun. It is what it is. All right. But yes, fact check Laura and I look up and say, wait a minute. They're talking about dark entities. Do these really exist? I don't believe they exist. Why don't you believe they exist? That's going to be my first question. You just don't. Well, like I told my kids growing up, just don't or because is not an answer. You know, so why don't you believe something? Why do you believe something? And put some concrete in your soul and it will help you with your faith. Absolutely. I've got a little piece coming out in this next week called What's Your Why? I'm always asked what rings true for you or not and why. And I got to hear. Uh, Isn't that funny that we're both on the same wavelength yeah. again? And That's guess- crazy. That's what I love about this. And I, I got, I had the privilege to hear Riley Gaines speak at a recent event. Mm-hmm. It, was a small, it was a smallish event. And she says, I didn't understand why nobody stood up for me. And then finally I said, I need to stand up for me. So I said, why are you doing this to me as, as the, they're holding the trophy for the Leah Thompson guy? And they stood and they're like, we don't know. So the person holding the trophy to give it to Leah Thompson or whatever his name is, um, that person didn't know why they were doing what they were doing. Think about that. Right. They didn't know. So always ask your why. What's your why? Right. Exactly. And if the answer is because somebody told me to, that's your first (laughs) flag. Not that it's wrong. They may have given you a very perfectly good, but you should fact check it. Why you know what, what's your why and you get some information and you say you know what that sounds right to me moving on discerning. with life, you know you're discerning spiritual discernment is huge and that's the problem with the airy fairy light worker world they don't discern stuff it's like oh love and light and sage blah blah blah, blah. unicorns and rainbows we're all good um you got to discern who or what you're de- dealing with it's i would never leave my six-year-old with the stranger down the road in a creeper van. Hey, can you watch my kid for five minutes? Yeah. Why is this okay in the spiritual realms? It's not. Right. There ain't no why about that one. (laughs) Exactly. I agree. All right. So next week, we're going to talk more about your progression. Now we're, you're, you're no longer teaching. You're at home and you're, you're in the battle. Okay. And things are biting you and, 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 burning you and touching you and now they're starting to hurt you next week we have got to talk about the next step okay and see what's going yes folks will we get off track and talk about points that come up absolutely that's what we do okay so just hang on to your butt follow along but you will see and we're going to get to more of laura's story of actually what's happening laura i'm going to let you roll in here with some exciting news of what's happening all right, so it's funny how things work out. Um, we got an email. We get an email from somebody. Her name is Crystal, and she's got a really 
she has a really important question, okay, about crossing over certain Native Americans who were at boarding schools. And by the way, that's a real thing. Um, I've actually worked on that in the past in certain areas. So it was really touched my heart that she reached out. And she was talking about this because it's near and dear to me. And in that email, she also says, hey, would you guys ever consider doing a show together? Like have your own show. But what was weird about that is that night, the night before we got the email, I had this dream where you and I are doing a show together. And I was like, there we go. Oh. Right? We so, get a sign, well, you know? Yeah. So, so we're going to be hanging out more regularly than uh, we anticipated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And folks, this is going to be fun. We're already making moves. We're setting up a channel, things like that, where Laura and I are going to start working together more. We are. We're going to be doing group. I guess, group crossovers, you know, we're going to be crossing over spirits at a discount rate if you buy a group package. So it's one of those things where we, we enjoy this too much. We, we do this and Laura and I gel. So we are going to be looking out and I want you to be, be ready to look for us on a channel called crossing realms together. And it will be while like you're here. They can like and subscribe right now. Yes, it's out there. It's now you will not find anything there yet, but it is there. So if you want to go search for it, it is published channel. It's up, but it's empty. But we are fixing to start doing that. We're going to start putting some things on. There will be a podcast. We are going, we're going to do this right. Laura and I are going to dive in and we are going to make a channel where people can come ask questions if they need help about the paranormal. All right, about spiritual, how different things cross over, mental health, all of it combined together. Okay. If you want to know if your husband's demon possessed, ask us. Okay. We'll ask you some questions. And I'm being silly because that's what I always do. But I want you to understand we're giving you a safe place to come ask questions. All right. And get some answers. You can either email us, there's a new email crossing realms together at gmail.com we are really going into this and we're going to do this so we need to do that now on top of that we're going to be doing a show i had mentioned it on october 30th okay laura tell them more about that show it's a live show and we want it to be interactive, but we're going to be really focusing in on ghost stories and paranormal stories. I'll be sharing some, Reverend Rob will be sharing some, and we want you guys to come in and share some as well. So that's going to be a live show on the 30th, um, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So we'd love to have you guys there for that. Absolutely. We're going to be telling ghost stories. We want to hear your stories. So at tarot with an attitude at gmail.com, Laura at the karmic path.com. Send us your ghost stories. We'll be glad to read them on the air. You can say, keep it anonymous. You can say, give your name or whatnot. We would love to hear it. And we were even already talking about this. Laura, my, my wife's cracking up. She's sitting over there listening to, uh, Laura and I talk, and I get so excited. Even in talking about it, we started telling ghost stories. We got them for you, folks. Different things were like, well, we got to save that. We got we got, we got to stop. So now we've got stories that we've told each other that are halfway through so we can find out the end. It's going to be a great time. Now, that's also going to be, didn't we say that's when we're going to do a with this lady, Crystal? I don't know if she's going to be on the show or not. Okay. We're going to figure out those details, um, but we're going to work with her. And I actually have another uh, client friend of mine who works on a reservation who's dealing with similar issues. So we're going to okay. see what we come across with that. Yeah. So be there because there's a very good possibility we will be crossing spirits, ghosts, things like this over. Not It's all not just fun and games, but we're going to be there. So, wow. Whew. A lot going on, some things to get excited about. We got even more stuff Laura and I are brewing up in our head, uh, even as far as personal appearances. So we'd love to we'd love to catch up with y'all in a bit. So with all that being said, everybody, take what you want, leave what you don't, 
but leave having experienced some peace, love, and light. Bangerang.